Oh, all right. Let's uh, let's get into a new video. Get loosey goosey. Get warmed up. Whew. All right. First off, I want to say big thank you to everyone who commented on my video returning back to YouTube and for all the suggestions and ideas that you guys left in the comment section as well. You guys gave me a lot to think about. And a lot of you guys also gave me a lot of credit freedom going forward. So uh, if my content ends up being complete trash, then you can vote by just not watching. <laughs> Please watch my videos. I promise they won't be terrible. Please watch them. I just want to give a quick shout out to Disturbed X1000 who left a comment uh, in that video before just asking about my opinion and thoughts on reviewing other people's AMVs and other AMVs in general. I thought that was a really good idea. I think it'd be really cool to have another revisiting video on AMVs because I've been so out of the loop for like the past 10 years. So I'd be really keen to see what's been happening. And I would love to see your AMVs as well as any other AMV that you guys find interesting. If that's my own AMVs too, let me know which ones and I'm more than happy to talk about them. Leave some suggestions in the comment section below for AMVs that you guys want me to watch and make a video about. But to get straight into the topic of the video and to keep the spirit of AMVs and the nostalgia still alive, I want to talk about why you should not make AMVs. So first off, in no particular order, I'm going to talk about why you should make AMVs. First off is the introduction to anime. So growing up, my first exposure to anime was through morning cartoons like Cheese TV here in Australia before going to primary school and stuff. We have this show called Cheese TV. And they would show all your favorite animes and cartoons before you go off to school. And I also watched a lot of anime on Toonami from Cartoon Network, as well as some very uh, adult stuff on Adult Swim, which opened a lot of other doors to other areas of my life. <laughs> And then from there, I wasn't too into, you know, renting VHS or DVDs at the time, but I did have access to things like, uh, which I'm not going to get too into, Torrance and LimeWire and Kazaa. I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Funny enough, that is actually how I got to see my first AMV because on LimeWire, I was looking for a certain track and it ended up being a Naruto plus Linkin Park AMV. And I was like, whoa, what is this? You can do this? And then when YouTube was first starting, I jumped onto that and that's when I saw even more AMVs using mostly Naruto and Linkin Park or Papa Roach or Disturbed or whatever band was really popular at the time. And then from there, it was just an exponential rabbit hole that exposed me to such a huge range and ocean of different types of stories and worlds and universes, stories that I still latch on to this day because they were so influential and so mesmerizing when I first watched them. Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> Samurai Champloo. <laughs> Cowboy Bebop and anything made by that specific okay, director. Three, two, one, it's jam. Ergo Proxy. Satoshi Kon's words. Matoko Shinkai's works. And then it spread into like manga as well, you know, Berserk, R.I.P. Kentaro Miura. And even to this day, even though I don't read or watch as much manga or anime as I used to, I still try to keep up to date with some stuff as well as keeping up to date with long running series. Like for example, I love One Piece. Through making AMVs, it just allowed me to find and look for more and more engaging stories and exciting narratives, latching onto incredible characters and just letting the imagination take me to as many places as it wants to. The next thing is music. So this is another huge part of my life that AMVs have influenced because honestly speaking, I don't think I would have this perspective on music or this open-mindedness towards music if it wasn't for AMVs. Growing up, most of the music I listened to was generally from you know TV music shows like MTV or Rage down here in Australia and through the radio or whatever music collection my parents had from cassettes and CDs. And if you don't know what a cassette is, man, you are young. <laughs> and then going through high school and having MP3 players and sharing music and all that type of stuff, nothing really compared to how much music I was exposed to through making AMVs. Although the community is mainly comprised of 
you know, the common interests of anime, we have to remember that one of the biggest components of that is music. And that is so diverse through making AMVs, through engaging with the AMV community and watching other people's works. It opened me up to so many genres and so many different sounds, like all the way from like experimental soundscape, ambient drone noise to heavy metal and then hip hop and R&B and soul and alternative and indie and every single genre in between, electro, pop, punk, hardcore, gabba, whatever, like just, I'm just listing as many genres off the top of my head as I can right now. And it really has shaped the way that I listen to music to this day. And although metal and hip hop and stuff like that is my most preferred genre of music, I'm really open to listening to anything and everything that hits a certain mood or a vibe or a certain emotion that I'm going through. And so I have to really thank making AMVs for guiding me to this place where I am now. Anyways, the next point is editing and filming. I'm just gonna combine those two together because if it wasn't for AMVs, I would most likely, if not definitely, not be here where I am today. Now, I'll probably expand on this in another video as well. Um, I have to thank, uh, sorry, I gotta read the name, uh, Faz, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Faz left a comment in my previous video saying to talk about that creative process and evolution that happened from making AMVs and then transitioning into more of a professional film kind of landscape and industry and how that all sort of works, what the challenges, etc. But I'll probably make that a separate video, but just to touch on this video, making AMVs was fundamental in creating that foundation to catapult me to where I am today. I got to learn the basics of editing, which then allowed me to almost reverse engineer the anime that I was working with, understanding story structure, pacing, uh, why certain effects were used to create certain types of emotions and impact, the little nuances and details for when to make cuts and how things work on that film vocabulary sort of level. And it gave me access to a tool that allowed me to express myself, which was probably one of the most important things growing up as well. I've been saying growing up a lot, so I guess like that's my new catchphrase. Just kidding, my new catchphrase is, I don't give a f Just a shit that and that leads into my next point, which is creative freedom. So again, in those formative years of my life, going from a child into a teenager, into a young adult, being able to make something that allowed me to express myself was so important. So growing up, making AMVs really allowed me to tell those stories and express those feelings that I was having during those times. I was able to take certain things from the anime, remix that, and convert it into something that I want to tell instead and reshape the story in that way. And then I could choose a specific song that reflected a certain type of story or emotion that I had and put that with the anime as well. Again, it just really let my imagination run wild. Another thing is community and collaboration. This is where the expansion of my perspective really started to kick off. When you're making something by yourself, there's only so much you can draw upon. But when you enter a community of like-minded and different-minded people, you get exposed to so many different types of influences and ideas, and that leaks into how I was exposed to more music, how I was exposed to more anime. And again, the support that you get from fellow community members who become friends, who become comrades of sorts, and who become a team as well. It all comes together and just makes this whole thing such a better experience. And it also exposed me to so many different cultures because I was talking to people from all around the world, like all the way from Europe to Asia, to America, to South America, to Africa. Like it was just like everyone and everything. And again, I can't thank you guys enough. And I can't thank everyone else um, who has been there throughout my years, who has given support and feedback and allowed me to become better, not as just a creator, but as a person as well. And speaking of collaboration, it's just, the effort of coming together as teams and creating a group project to reflect things that we want to express in love. I think it's such a positive experience for anyone to have, uh, especially when they're younger as well, to work together as a team and be part of a certain community. I will also say that being part of a community has helped me to get thicker skin. Because the way I was raised was very uh, insulated and I had helicopter parents, any type of harsh feedback or insult or anything like that would make me feel extremely insecure. <laughs> when I first got my harsh piece of feedback, uh, when I made my Naruto AMV with what I've done, there was a comment left by, um, 
forgetting his name. His name was like Kev something. Anyways, when I made that AMV and I was getting like millions of views and heaps of positive comments, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is great. I'm the best. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> and then this comment drops in going like, this is trash. This is f what is wrong with this AMV? Look at all these useless, unnecessary effects. My eyes are bleeding. It's just terrible. You're and Okay, well, he didn't say it that dramatically, but um, I just went to this full defensive mode and I was like, how dare you? What do you know about making AMVs, huh? No, you can't hurt my feelings. You're not allowed to say that. But I will say that being exposed to this stuff allowed me to reflect and be like, okay, why is it? I just dropped my phone, sorry. <laughs> why is it that I'm feeling this way and why should I be affected by this? And then I kind of started to realize like, oh my God, like actually what am I doing? And so what ended up happening was I just start to dig into a bit more, watch some other AMVs and start questioning like, okay, what am I doing wrong? What do you think I can improve on? What can I do to be better at what I do? And it became this conversation and this back and forth of actual feedback and actual, you know, becoming friends almost. <laughs> um, it ended up becoming, again, a very educational experience for me, getting to learn this process of breaking things down and rebuilding them, looking at things from a different perspective and opening my mind up so that I can proceed forward in a much more healthier and positive direction. Now we're gonna finally get onto why you should not make AMVs. And this list is probably gonna be much shorter than why you should make AMVs, but yeah, I think it should be talked about anyways. So the first one I wanna talk about is the dreaded copyright. So I think everyone who has made AMVs from 2007 or eight, all the way until now, hates copyright. Now you can't completely blame the companies who do this because it is their property, but really like, I feel like it's a lot more beneficial because Again, going back to the whole point about introduction to anime and music, there's like a huge underground community of people just trading anime and talking about manga and all that type of stuff. But if it wasn't for these platforms where content creators could make all this stuff with all those different mediums to then expose it to such a large audience, there wouldn't be such a huge market for this right now in the first place, I feel like, or it would be much more delayed. All the globalization that's been happening in the last couple of decades really thrust pop culture out into the hemisphere and now everyone is invested in it everyone wants to have a part in it and i honestly don't think that it would have been this fast of a process or even be at this point if it weren't for you know making amvs or having access to this type of stuff in uh, various ways and yeah going back to amvs it just sucks when you're trying to make something for fun and every second in the back of your head it's just copyright it just, it feels really draining and it does take the fun out of making AMVs. Another thing that really sucks the fun out of making AMVs is the time consumption. If you're having fun, obviously that's not really much of an issue, but AMVs can take anywhere from a few minutes to 30 minutes to a couple hours to days to weeks to months, depending on the complexity of it. As a kid, it didn't really affect me much because it was a hobby, I was having fun, I was in high school, I had free time, I was exploring new things. But once I start to transition more into an adult, then I start to run into the problem of time consumption. It was a hobby that was starting to drain time away from areas of my life that I want to concentrate on. And that's not to say like my job and my career is my only purpose in life. But for me personally, I want to figure out what I want to do. And AMVs was starting to fall off that list, especially my tail end of my AMV days. It started to come to a point where sitting there for hours on end every week was really starting to take a toll on me uh, on a social level, on a mental and physical level, especially when you're trying to make something a bit more complex or trying to uh, figure out how to push certain boundaries and test out new effects and stuff. And then you kind of figure out there's only so much you can do with what you have, which leads me to the next point of creative prison. <laughs> I know I said there's the creative freedom aspect, but on the other end, there is that sense of limitation and restriction when it comes to making AMVs. Again, when I'm young, I can let the imagination run really wild and just do whatever I want to express myself. But as I got older, I start to realize that I really want to make my own stuff, like purely my own stuff, my own footage, um, using and collaborating with other artists and other creatives rather than taking from things that are already pre-made, such as, you know, popular music and popular anime. So to draw a graph with my hand, 
uh, at the start it was like whoa look at all this creative freedom i'm getting and then as soon as i hit this peak i start to realize like man i feel like i'm really being held back by having to work with this specific type of content and the more and more i was exposed to the world and other perspectives and other mediums and just everything in general the more i felt like i wanted to expand my horizons a bit and get out of this specific pool that i'm in and again when it comes to making that move into a career or a job and finding that footing into the next stage of my life it then led on to the idea of making money and with amvs you can't really make money off of them i mean you can win competitions from like uh anime uh conventions and exhibitions and stuff like that and competitions online you can get prizes from my experience personally um, if you had a different experience let me know in the comment section below but from my experience personally when it comes to making an actual income you can't actually make money off of the amvs themselves maybe if you make tutorials on how you make the amvs you could possibly get some revenue that way but the amvs themselves don't and cannot produce any sort of revenue because again it's copyright material you can't sell it and the thing is personally i'm not really a materialistic person honestly if i could in an ideal world would not think about money at all because all i want to do is create things and that makes me happy but dude's gotta eat <laughs> and also i gotta support my girlfriend as well and she supports me and in the future when we have kids i got more mouths to feed yeah it just kind of goes on and on again i actually don't really even like talking about money and i generally don't think about money that much or at all <laughs> on a daily basis but yeah it just went lower and lower on my priority list because at the time i had so much other stuff that was happening in my life i had bills to pay i was moving around a lot and i had to find a way to adapt my skills that i learned through that into a way that could actually produce some sort of monetary outcome for me. So that's probably my most cynical kind of point as to why you should not make AMVs. And again, the positives outweigh that by a large margin, but I thought I'd sort of just put that in there because that's been my personal experience when it came to, you know, trying to reutilize my AMVs for real life applications. But yeah, those are my reasons as to why you should or should not make AMVs. Heavily leaning towards making AMVs because it opens up a lot of doors to a lot of different things, so I definitely recommend it. If you guys have additional thoughts to this as to why you made AMVs or why you don't want to make AMVs anymore, why you guys stop making AMVs, let me know in the comment section below. And just again to touch on what Disturbed X1000 suggested, let me know in the comment section below if you want me to watch any specific AMVs, whether they're your AMVs, uh, any other people's AMVs or even my AMVs, I'm more than happy to make a video reacting to, reviewing and giving my thoughts and opinion on those videos. I think it'll be really fun and also it'll help me to sort of catch up on like what's been happening in the last 10 years. If there are any really cool videos and AMVs that you guys seen over the years, I would really love to see that as well. But anyways, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope I didn't ramble on too long. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, oh, my ass hurts. Oh, my God. I shouldn't have sat on that stool for so long. Oh, my God.